Hello and welcome to DigiLink's course Introduction to Python for Linguists. My name is Petra Bago. In this lesson, we will cover basic data types you can create in Python. The basic built-in data types in Python are numbers, strings, and booleans. Numbers can be divided into integers and floating point numbers. Integers are numbers that can be written without a fractional component, like 7 or 292. Floating point numbers are real numbers. That is, floating point numbers are numbers that are written with a fractional component, like 3.14. Later in this course, we will also learn about other data types, like the Unicode data type, lists and dictionaries. There are also other data types, like tuples and sets. But for now, we will cover numbers, strings and booleans. Data types can be mutable or immutable. In object-oriented programming, a mutable object can be changed after it is created. On the other hand, an immutable object cannot be changed after it is created. What does this mean? This means that when a mutable object is updated, it does not return a new object. While an immutable object returns a new object when updated. Immutable built in data types in Python are integers, floating point numbers, strings, booleans, and tuples. Mutable data types are lists, dictionaries, and sets. What does this mean? It means that every time we modify an integer or a string, Python perceives this like we created a new object, that is, a new integer or a new string. But when we modify a list or a dictionary, Python perceives this like we only updated the same object, like we updated the same list or the same dictionary. Why does Python even have data types? Well, data types define what operations can be done on the data, that is how we can manipulate the data. Data types also define how the data can be stored and what possible values it can possess. For example, if we want to do multiplication, we will use one of the number data types. If we have to handle some text, we will use strings. Basically, when we select a type of data, we tell Python how we intend to use the data, what we plan to do with it. Data types have also restrictions on how the data can be manipulated. For example, we can't do exponentiation on strings or booleans, but on numeric data types. Two numerical data types we will cover in this lesson are integers and floating point numbers or floats. There are other numeric types in Python like long integers and complex numbers but we will stick to integers and floats. Integers and floats are immutable data types. Both can be of positive or negative value. Integers are numbers without a decimal point, like 7, or minus 9,876. It can be as big of a number as 9 trillion if you are using the long scale or 9 quintillion if you are using the short scale. Basically, it can be as big as 9 followed by 18 zeros and a little bigger. It can also be as small as minus 9 and 18 zeros and a little smaller. Floats are numbers with decimal points. The decimal point divides the integer and the fractional part like 3.14 or minus 1234.56 and so on. Floats can also be very big or very small numbers. 
and they can be in scientific notation written with uppercase letter E or lowercase letter E indicating the power of 10. Floating point numbers have their limitations. If the result of an operation is bigger than the biggest possible value a float can have, the program returns value inf from infinity. By the same analogy, if the result of an operation is smaller than the smallest possible value a float can have, the program returns value 0. Next data type we'll cover is a string. Strings are immutable data types. They're a sequence of one or more characters and closed by quotation marks. You can use single quotes or double quotes. However, you have to remember that the type of quote you start with, you have to use to end the string. You can also use a combination of both types of quotes. For example, if you open a string with a single quote, you can use double quotes as characters in your strings. And of course, vice versa. We can also initialize a string, that is, we can create an empty string. An empty string is a string that has no characters as values. To write an empty string, you just have to put two single quotes or two double quotes one after the other. Be careful of the difference between digits saved as strings and digits saved as numerical data types. 3.14 can be written as a string or as a float. You probably would want to write it as a floating point number because you will want to do mathematical operations on it. For example, telephone numbers can be stored as strings. You probably won't subtract one telephone number from the other. We have mentioned that a string is a sequence of characters. In sequences, the order of elements is important. For example, it is not the same thing we have a string that says D-O-G, dog, and another that said G-O-D, god, although they contain the same elements but not in the same order. Since order is important in sequences, we can do something called indexing or accessing or addressing one element of the sequence. In the case of strings, we can access the character. For example, we can access a letter G in a string dog. Another thing we can do is slicing. Slicing is selecting parts of the sequence, that is a range of characters. It selects everything up to but not including the character with the ending index. Basically, with slicing, we can address one, two, or three sequential characters from the string dog. We can index a string by writing an index in square brackets after the string. We can slice a string by writing a starting in index, then a colon, and then an ending index. One important thing you have to remember is that Python uses zero-based indexing or zero-based numbering. Zero-based numbering means that the first element of the sequence is assigned the index zero. So the first element has the index 0, the second one has the index 1, the third one has the index 2, and so on. If you are from Europe, you can relate to it by thinking of elevators. The number for the ground floor is 0 and not 1. We can also index and slice using negative index values. The last element of the index is minus 1. The element before the last has the index of minus 2 and so on. Let's look at some examples. Let's say we have a string circus. To address the first character, we write the string, then open square bracket, then zero, then close square bracket. The program will return character C. If we want to address the last character, without having to count how many characters there are, we can write the string, then open square bracket, then minus one, and then close square bracket. If we want to slice some parts of the string, we can do that too by writing in the square brackets the starting index, then colon, and then the ending index. 
If we omit, for example, the starting index and write in square brackets only colon and then the ending index, the program will assume that we meant to say start from the beginning and go to the ending index we defined. By analogy, if we omit the ending index, we only write the starting index and then the column and then the closing square bracket, the program will assume that we meant to say start from the index we defined and go to the end of the string. You can combine positive and negative index values as long as the starting index is an element of the sequence that appears before the ending index. However, if the starting index is an element of the sequence that is it is a character in a string that appears after the element with the ending index, the program will return an empty string. Strings are not only letters, digits and punctuation. Strings are also white space like space or new line and other characters. Escaped characters are non-printable characters and some other characters. Escape characters in Python use backslash notation. There is a short list of some escape characters that you will need. For example, if we use double quotes for starting a string, we can use the double quote in the string by writing backslash double quote. Also, we can put a new line in the string by writing backslash n. To put a tab in a string, we can write backslash t. There are other escape characters in Python. This is not an exhaustive list. Finally, the last data type we will cover in this lesson is Boolean. Booleans are immutable data types. They only have two values, true and false. Usually, they are used for comparing values. For example, we can check if 4.5 is greater than 9. The program will return false. We can check if two values are equal. We can also check if two values are not equal, that is, if two values are different. In the lesson covering basic operators, we will learn comparison operators in Python. To revise, in this lesson we have covered some data types in Python. The data types we have covered in more detail are integers, floats, strings, and booleans. We have also covered indexing and slicing strings. Let's look at some code.